Welcome everybody. I just about fell down. <laughs> I come off this curve, I about fell. Welcome everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm starting this video off here in Tell City, Indiana. And as you can see, I'm in another cemetery. So that means it's back by popular demand, the famous grave tour. So I want to get the first one out of the way that's kind of more of our darkest, more saddest uh, story, famous grave that we're going to talk about. This was an aviation disaster. Happened back in March of 1960 when a Lockheed Electra L-188 uh, or something like that was flying from Chicago. Originally uh, started off from Minneapolis and then stopped in Chicago and then was making its way down to Florida. Well, as it passed over through into Indiana down in this direction, was just up the road in Candleton. I experienced some clear air turbulence, which, you know, you ever been on airplanes, that's a normal thing. You know, you're going to hit that. Well, unfortunately, there was a design flaw in the airplane, which caused the engine to flutter. You know, I know it looks silly, but that's what the engine was doing. It would flutter like that. And it caused metal fatigue and caused the wing to, from what I read, the wing literally like separated off of the aircraft and came crashing down at uh, several hundred miles an hour and crashed down to the cold hard Indiana ground. And unfortunately killed everybody on board because there's so much debris. They thought that two airplanes had collided. And then they also thought, well, maybe there was a bomb on board uh, because it was just such a mess. They thought maybe a bomb exploded. But unfortunately, uh, it was a design flaw. And it's this was like the second, I think, uh, disaster to happen with this. It was a with this kind of airplane. So it's kind of sad that that, you know, that these accidents had to happen in order to get something fixed. And this is the monument the grave site of the victims of that aircraft disaster back in March of 1960 and I don't think they was able to uh, unfortunately I don't think they're able to get every victim out of that crater it was such a deep and hard impact that they uh, got out who they could I do believe and uh, they lay them to rest here, and then the rest of them are buried at the crash site, I do believe. So you can also go out to Candleton, Indiana, which is just up the road just a little bit, a few miles. And you can actually go to the crash site. They have a memorial built there and kind of a pathway around the crater it, of where the aircraft uh, struck. This next old grave wasn't, and I didn't have it planned to be on my list, but it does have to uh, do with aviation disaster. And this young lady here was uh, a victim of the uh, World Trade Center attacks on September 11, 2001. So I'm back here in Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky, and here is the final resting place of fashion designer Tonya Twist. The name may not sound familiar, but you're familiar with her work. She gave people like Mariah Carey and Michael Jackson and David Letterman and Christina Ricci. She helped give them their look. She was a fashion designer for these celebrities. Sadly, nobody really knew the extent of Tanya's deep depression. And on May 20th of 2000, she took her life by suicide. And she worked exclusively with Mariah Carey. Uh, she dedicated the last four years of her life working with her and uh, getting her hair and stuff like that done for music videos and live concerts. Actually, the song Mariah Carey did called Twister was actually about her. It was actually about uh, Tanya. 
you know, I kind of wonder, being that she worked for Mariah Carey all those years, I wonder if Mariah Carey has ever come down through here when she passed through town or something. I wonder if she'd ever stop here and pay her respects. That's kind of interesting to know. I'd be kind of curious to, to know whether she has or not. Our next stop takes us to Belle Reve Gardens Cemetery. And it's a beautiful place out here. But I wanted to show probably the most popular grave that's out here. Here's the final resting place of Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry is known as one of the pioneers of rock and roll music, having uh, major hits like Maybelline, rock and roll music, Roll Over Beethoven, but probably his most famous song would probably be Johnny Be Good. He was also uh, known as one of the greatest guitar players ever. One of my favorite songs of him is the song My Dingling. If you've never heard it, look it up. I will warn you, though, it is kind of a perverted song, but it's it's funny. And Mr. Barry was also inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. And you can see here, a lot of people have stopped by and paid their respects, leaving coins here. So mine's left a uh, guitar pick. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. It's like a hotel key. I'm not really sure what the significance of that is. Sadly, Mr. Berry passed away in March of 2017 at the age of 90. So he lived a long, good life. Somebody has left a flower. I like the, on the doors, that has got a guitar. It's awesome. And you can't see inside, you, you can't, if you, I can't really focus my camera in there, you can kind of see a stained glass window in the back. And inside it says, there's a scripture at the top says, In my father's house, there are many mansions. John 14, 2. It's a real beautiful mausoleum they have built for such a great rock and roll artist. You know, I've been to a lot of cemeteries and I've always seen unique things and things that kind of stand out that's different. But one thing I've never seen in a cemetery is a putting green. They literally have a putting green right here in the middle of the cemetery. How odd is that? I've never seen this in a cemetery before. That, that's just bizarre. Although it does look like our green's a little thick. Grass is a little thick to be a putting green. Usually when they cut a putting green it's a whole lot shorter than that. But still anyways, I've never seen a putting green out here. I People just come out here and play golf? Seriously? Like, you know, we're done with the funeral. What can we do now? Well, let's go hit a few golf balls in the cemetery. That is bizarre. I'm in Oak Ridge Cemetery in Springfield, Illinois. And we're checking out probably the most famous grave in this entire video. And that is the tomb of our 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. Of course, you know, you know, I don't have to go into huge details. Pretty much everybody knows about President Lincoln, how he worked on freeing the slaves and was president during the Civil War, and, you know, just millions, several other things, not millions of other things, several other things he is uh, well known for, and uh, certainly a great president, in my opinion. Funny enough, you see, you know, pictures of Abraham Lincoln, like on the $5 bill and stuff. And it's crazy, he was only like, what, like 56 years old when he passed away, whenever he was assassinated. He looks a lot older than that. It just really goes to show you the toll it takes on somebody uh, being president and everything, just the stress 
which, you know, he had a lot of stress on because, you know, he was dealing with the Civil War, was working on freeing the slaves, and, you know, a bunch of other things like that. So he had a lot on his mind that he was doing. So I, it's easy to understand why he aged, why he looked so much older because he had so much he was dealing with as a president. I will have to make another video going to where he grew up at down in southern Indiana. They got a park, Lincoln State Park. It's a really nice place to visit too and go camping and stuff. And here it is, President Lincoln's final resting spot. This is a really great uh, place they built for him. He's actually not inside this, but he's actually 10 feet down. And then this is covering over the top. So these flags over here to the left, uh, they honor the modern states within the within whose borders President Lincoln's ancestors once lived: uh, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. On this side, these represent where the president resided at: Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois. It's a fantastic place. And this is his son, Robert Todd Lincoln. But he's not buried here. He's buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Looks like when they was inscribing that, it looks like they messed up. It's weird. Directly on the opposite wall from Robert Todd Lincoln's black, you got the Gettysburg Address. This is absolutely a beautiful monument they built for him. One more look at that. Really like that. I'm not the only vlogger out here today. There's two other guys back behind me a little bit doing their vlogs here, so. Trying to stay out of their way, and they're staying out of my way, so let's go on. Walk. So here, just right down the hill from where Lincoln's tomb is, you can actually see, come back a little bit, you can actually see it right up here. But this is where he was originally laid to rest at, just a temporary spot uh, until uh, they could get better place, a uh, better place for him uh, from... May of 1865, December of 1865, he laid here. And it said that thousands of people passed through as he laid out, was laid right here. Of course, there were soldiers keeping guard out here. Here you can see a picture same monument. The guard standing there. So now we find ourselves in Terre Haute, Indiana at Highland Lawn Cemetery. And it's a really massive place. And I also know what you're thinking. This whole route that I'm doing makes absolutely no sense. I start in Indiana, go to St. Louis, Go turn around, go back to Illinois, then back up into Indiana. What in the world am I doing? But anyways, I'm here to talk about not just really the person this time that is that has a weird story. It's more along the lines of this person's dog. Back in 
1920, a gentleman by the name of John Hanil, 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 I don't know how to pronounce his last name, that's, that's not what I'm here for, uh, anyways, he had a dog, a little bulldog, after he passed away, the dog was absolutely devastated, and the dog would constantly show up and would be found right here at the steps of his grave, of his uh, mausoleum right here. And the family would be notified and I guess like the care workers or something would tell them, say, hey, your dog is back up here, you know. And they'd come and they'd get the dog, take him back home, but the dog would always get out again and they'd always find the dog right here. And I thought that was a bigger step than what it was. Anyways, so they just let the dog just stay here. Finally, they just left him alone. They just said, fine, you know, we'll just let the dog stay. You know, cemetery care workers took care of the dog, I do believe, from what I read. I know, big deal. Dog misses owner. That's what's the, what's the weird thing about it. Okay, so the weird thing is after... The dog passed away. They took, had the dog stuffed. I guess that's weird right there. Had the dog stuffed and they entered the dog with his owner. Okay, again, what's weird about that? Well, the weird part is not long after, there was reports of a dog barking coming from inside this mausoleum. People would go in here and they'd see the dog stuffed and just sitting there, you know, not not alive, you know. But people coming through, care workers and people walking by, swerving down, they'd hear a dog barking from inside of this mausoleum. And they said the dog would come right here and sit down on the steps. And this is where the dog died. It, it died right here beside his owner. My assumption is the dog probably would hang around through here. I also read that the dog would growl and bark at people as they would come by. See his his grave is is buried right here on this second one up. And in about the 1980s, the dog stayed in here forever, for about the 1980s, and when somebody took, some vandals came in here and shot out the glass in here. I guess they shot it, and it, and they shot at the dog, too, and damaged part of its face and eye. It had uh, green gem, green uh, marble eyes, and you could shine your flashlight in here, and you could see it. See the eyes glowing at you. It's a pretty stained glass window. So after some vandals took and uh, damaged the dog, which there's no reason at all to be vandalizing a, a grave like that, uh, they, the uh, city of Terre Haute took the dog out of... They had the dog taken out, or the family, I'm not sure if it was a city, but I think it was a family, uh, decided to get the dog out of there, and the dog now sits at the city museum here in Terre Haute, and you can go visit that dog to this day. He's a little rough looking, he's a little dusty, and and uh, you can see the, the damage on part of his face where, where uh, the vandals took and shot at the dog. Another bizarre story is that people claim at about night time it's always at night it's never during the day they claim at night that they see uh, him and his dog walking through the cemetery and finally our last stop takes us to Logansport Indiana at Mount, Mount Hope Cemetery I'm not really looking for a specific grave. This one has to do with the entire cemetery. This is a strange tale I heard. That upon entering 
you should be hearing horses galloping. Now I'm standing right here beside a bunch of uh, uh, war veterans, graves and stuff, thinking, well, maybe, you know, maybe why you're here is maybe somewhere in the Calvary. And, but uh, I've walked down through here, I've not heard anything yet. No horses galloping. But it says that if you whistle throughout the park, throughout, not the park, but the cemetery, if you whistle throughout here, spirits are supposed to whistle back at you. I don't hear no whistling back. Maybe if we walk around a little bit more, maybe we'll hear some whistling. I still don't hear no whistling. I don't know. I guess uh, they don't feel like whistling today, I guess. Or maybe the, the myth is untrue. Maybe I'm in the wrong part of the cemetery. So I haven't heard any horses galloping. No whistling back at me. I don't hear nothing. Now, I have read also that some of these mausoleums are supposed to have creepy inscriptions on them. So we'll go look around some of these mausoleums, see if any's got any written, writing on them. Well, this cemetery is pretty much a bus, so I'm trying to find anything creepy. I have searched over just about every mausoleum there's, that's here. Didn't find any kind of creepy inscriptions on it. Haven't heard no horses galloping and didn't hear any whistling back. So, I guess it's just a room where people started just to get you out here. Which I had my doubts to begin with that any of that was real, but you never know. It's worth investigating. So I want to thank you guys for joining me and I will catch you all next time. See ya.